Good day, everyone. If you have a nice Jaguar S-Type, but you are embarrassed because you have cold air on the insides, but on the outside vents, as you can see here, it's getting quite hot and your friends are making fun of you, then you're definitely gonna wanna pay attention to this video. What normally happens is three things. Either your hot water valve goes or the center stack AC control, uh, you can replace that. Or I'm actually gonna show you in this video, which is dedicated to rebuilding the unit right here. So we're gonna take it out and we're gonna rebuild it. I'll put the link up for the other videos if you're interested. All right, everyone, so we can see here's a module. So there's nothing really that special to it. Once it's out, it just looks like your average little, I guess, I don't know, computer piece from the car. So there's really not much to it. Now this piece here in the front, this is the microphone. So we have to just make sure we don't break the microphone when we're taking it apart. So what I do, uh, you can see how it's all connected there. I can just pull this out just like so. There you can see it's nice and loose. And then we can just sort of detach it all. And then what we're gonna do is disconnect the connector from the back right here. So here's this clip. We can just put a screwdriver in there. You can see we're gonna pull down on it and then we should be able to pull the clip right up. And there you can see I've loosened it. So now we can just slide it up like here and you can see on the back, there's that little tab. That's what that uh, white thing is there. You just got to pull it up with a screwdriver. So anyway, not a big deal. Let's move on. So there's these two tabs at the top. You can use just a small little flathead screwdriver to get in. I've sped up the video just two times. So really, it shouldn't take you that long to do it. You can see there we go. And I just popped it apart. And then what we're gonna do now that it's apart, I'm just gonna grab this piece right here and carefully pull it up and disconnect it from the board. So now you can see the two pieces are actually disconnected. So now in this piece here, what we're gonna do is we can actually, this part here will pull out after we undo these tiny little screws right here. Okay, so here's the bolts right here. I have my Torx number six, so I'll throw that up. So it's just a Torx number six. So let's take these bolts out. Okay guys, so here's a good look at the circuit board. So if I flip it over, you can see there it's burnt. So right there, I guess there was too much current. The hot water valve, uh, I guess, shorted out and caused that to happen. So what we're gonna do is we're going to solder in a jumper. Okay, so jumper has been soldered in. Now, here you can see, there it is. Uh, my wires are right there. I'll flip it over. Maybe I'll throw up a magnifying glass so you can see exactly how they pop through. So they look good and hopefully they hold up. So that's, that's the great thing. But now if you look at the circuit board here, I'm gonna have these wires dangling out and I can't fit a fuse underneath when I slide this back in the housing. So we're gonna put the fuse on the top. So here you can see there's the soldering connection. So there's one and I'll pan over and I'll show you the other one. And so we'll basically have our little glass 1.5 amp fuse in there. So now what I'll do is I'll just put the heat shrink right here. I'm gonna get out the heat gun and just shrink it down. So this way we have a really nice connection. Okay, so here's just a quick summary. Here's how it looks. So this looks pretty good. There's a fuse holder. You can see I can slide it, uh, the circuit board out. There are the connections. Let's just put it back in. And then what we can do is we can put our 1.5 amp fuse in and then just leave the fuse on the top. So here we go. Let's just put our fuse in just like so and then we can tuck this all away and there you can see that's how it'll look so we'll just put the wires up uh, nice at the top like this so they won't touch anything so and the car it's not like it's being off-roaded like a doom buggy or anything like that so nothing should really come loose it should be fine just like that in there i can't see there being any issues uh, with anything coming loose so now we'll just put our torx number six screws back in and then we are good to go Okay, so it's time to put the two parts together. So you can see you just gotta be careful and you can plug it back together, just like so. The three tabs go in the bottom, snaps together, just like so. And I'm leaving this in for a blooper just because we all make mistakes. Obviously the microphone doesn't fit, so I'm gonna use my flathead and just pull this apart just a wee bit here, just so I can snap my microphone. So the microphone has to go in first. 
and then I'll be able to snap it together. You'll see it'll snap together just like so. And then what we can do is route the microphone back the way it was supposed to go and snap it back onto the clip. And that is it. So once you want to put it back together again, it's easy if you want, just put it in drive. It just makes it a little bit easier to get to these uh, side bolts when you're doing up the top part. Now, before you totally do up your uh, dash and put everything all back together, it's always a good idea just to plug it in and try it first, just to see if the repair actually worked. Let's start it up and, and see what happens. So I'm gonna put the AC on and I'm gonna cool it right down. on now let's go here that should cool right down now because I'm running it there you go so let's see the outside vents and you know what the outside vents are cold so there's that vent let's put it back to the middle the middle is obviously going to be a degree or two colder but basically it works it is not uh, it's not hot on the outside vents I may even have to rev it up a bit because it's just at idling. So, just to see, there you go, we got 68 there, 67. Now let's see, we're down into the low 60s, so this should be, now it won't be as cold, but it should be pretty close. Now I would say that's a win because it's very cold. It still feels cold, like I said, it's not as cold as center, but the thing is, if you go in the center like this, and you go all the way hot, Where's our temperature here? There we go. Let's go all the way hot. Here's all the way hot. Let's turn this off. And we should have here, where's mode? There we go. Now this center should heat up, which it is. You can see it's heating up there. There we go, you get the picture. It's over 100, so now this outside vent should also be hot. And it is it's getting hotter. So now let's even leave it in the outside vent. And let's now change it all the way cold. So I got it all the way cold. We're just gonna turn it down there. Put it on recirc just so you can hear me on the camera so it's not blowing. And now this should be starting to cool down. And there you go, it's actually cooling down. And there you can see, outside vents are cold and inside vents are cold. So our repair worked, but what was interesting is the, out, uh, the exterior temperature wasn't working properly on the one unit. And I tried swapping just the headpiece and it's not in the headpiece. So whatever that exterior unit uh, uh, for your temperature, it's in the actual circuit board because the actual circuit board that I repaired is the one that we have in this car now. And the junkyard one doesn't read right. So it's something in the circuit board. But anyway, we've repaired it, that's fine. Anyway, that's it now. This can just go back together. Garage King over and out. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one. This one was an interesting one. Thanks, and we'll see you on the next one.